All right, you guys, so you're seeing it. Cars of every type everywhere, but it's not always about that. So you guys see the vlogs that I'm doing. It's much more about what's going on behind the scenes, individual people and the effort that they put in. So if you want to see pictures of cars, you just look at the hashtag for SEMA, SEMA show and whatnot. But for me, there's individual people I want to showcase. We got more interviews coming. So stay tuned with me. Um, and you'll be able to learn a little bit about what goes into it, not just the parts, but the effort and the history and the heart and the passion. Okay? 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 You guys are so cute! Alright. Alright, now he's speaking Japanese. <laughs> What up, <laughs> but, Hey, hold on now, dog. This sleeve is struggling to, to fit with these arms and these delts, bro. What is going on? You have this man in the gym, girl, or what? Uh, that's just how we <laughs> Hey! Where we are and what's going on. So we're at the SEMA 2019 show, and I'm Ryan Bossy from Ridewire. And uh, we have our... <laughs> Bro, why would you not open it this whole time, dude? Because somebody fucked it up. <laughs> so I like that. We got lenses, gimbals, Ronins, and bananas. That's how you get down. And We're going to go to the Razo booth with... Say hi, Mel. Hi. Uh, and all these people in the uniform. Everyone's got the shirt. I don't, though. All right, so we're setting up shop right here mics and well i'm big mike not uh, i meant like audio equipment mike okay mic. uh the chairs culture nerds ryan the Wilson, Tina, every i don't even know all these guys been, we out here gang gang that's what they say hey <laughs> Battle of the Builders top 12. Yes, sir. Announcement is going down right now. So if this top 12 represents kind of the present and the future of hot riding, there's your future right there. Your three finalists for the Young Guns, let's hear it for that. We're clearing out the booth right now to get ready to do this interview. At the Honda Acura booth, and I'm excited to talk to Daniel because you guys know him from the Badlands. You guys might know him from, you know, modeling gigs and Hollywood and stuff like that. But uh, he's a car guy and this Honda build he did is dope. And I want you guys to know about it. So, let's go. All right, you guys, I'm here with the homie, Daniel Wu. You guys, this has made a lot of waves here at the Honda booth. Daniel, look, we can look up modifications. You have the chart out here for people to right. read, but that's not what we're talking about. I remember you calling me just a couple months ago right. and you're like, uh, you we know. took the body <laughs> off the chassis. It is, I don't know what to do. Yeah. So you ended up doing what to get that ready? We ended up having to get a donor car Yeah. and basically chop it up and make this thing happen. So, so two cars. Yeah, so the, originally the coupe came and arrived my friend had owned it for five or six years. Yes. The last time I'd seen it was five or six years ago. Yes. It looked in perfect condition when it arrived because all the body panels had been done in fiberglass in the 90s in a bad yes. store. When we ripped all that off and when we got the body off, we realized how badly rusted the, the, the coupe was. Yeah. Very badly rusted. The frame was like Swiss cheese. There was okay. holes everywhere. I and saw that, some of the photos. That's when I called you panicking, going, what am I going to do? Yeah. 
Uh, and you were you were thinking that it just wasn't gonna happen. I was thinking just to call it a day. Sure. At the moment, right? And so luckily, I was when I was searching parts on eBay, I saw this dude parting out lots of things. And yeah. I thought, it seems like you have a whole car that you're parting out. Well, the one you told me about in LA in was LA, it? LA, yes. Okay. Yeah. So I finally hit him up and I said, "Do you have a Do you have a full car?" And he's like, "Well, actually, I actually have a car that I've been trying to restore for 15 years, but I've never had time to do it. It was just sitting in his yard." So the next day, I drove down to LA, bought it from him. The whole stuff. car? You had to buy the whole car? He yeah. wouldn't part pieces no, out? No, no. Okay, so you ended up with two 800s. Two 800s. One convertible, <laughs> one coupe. That's this, crazy. Like, coupe. Yeah. To make the Honda S800 Outlaw that you did. Yep. Okay, look. So for those of you guys that you see it right here, they converted it to a twin center exit, right? But it's generally two on the outside, two, right? Um, two split on the outside. Um, it's still nice, but not enough gangster. Like the whole design brief for this car was to take a cute classy car that it was originally designed for and make it gangster yes right? so the whole idea is that if you were uh, this is a 68 if you're a uh, up-and-coming gangster in Japan in 1975 what would you do to this car to make it more gangster right? yes your boss probably has a 2000 GT yes you're not ready for that yet right uh, but you want to be in that echelon so, yes so how do we make this thing a little more gangster and so teaming up with a uh, rocket bunny pandem uh, became your son that was key um, if he didn't agree to it I probably wouldn't be able to get this done and so I sent him a message I said well he wanted to do a 510 with me and I'd already done a 510 two years ago right so I want to do something different so I sent him a picture of this car I said can we do this together with over fender flares um, an air dam and a tail yes and he agreed to do it so as soon as the car arrived in Long Beach I went down there picked it up sent it to the SEMA garage right away. We 3D scanned it, sent him all the data, and in four or five months, the kit was done and he sent it over to me. And it fit like a T. Perfect. Like, you know, most body kits don't fit right, right? This thing, because it was custom made for this car, for the shape that it was, it, everything fit out perfectly. You know, normally Fender Flares, you're like, is it go this way, this way, this Yeah, way? yeah. This thing just went doop. Well, I remember oh, when you said that it was the SEMA garage, you ended up using the SEMA garage official garage to yep. do the scanning. Yep. And that weekend I was out of state and I missed it because I yeah, totally yeah, would have yeah. gone and checked that out. Yeah. But you use that technology, internet, send it over to Japan Completely. and he cranks out the flare. So let's go over that real quick sure. here. You know, it's got, it's got that, I know that he wanted to go wider, right? Yes, yeah. I know that he wider, wanted to go wider. There is, the, trying to find wheels for this car is almost impossible uh, because it's a 13 inch, Five by one thirty PCD. Yes, and that's just weird. Nobody makes wheels, right. wheels like that unless they're 15, 17 inch, you know. Um, and usually they're Porsche wheels. And so he wanted to go four inches on the flare, and I'm like, no, man. Right. We can't. We don't find. We don't have wheels for that. Yes. So and also it would screw with the uh, uh, towing and the turning. Yes. So we decided to take, take it back down to like two, basically two inches on each side, um, and that made it much more manageable. As a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a wheel wheel choice. So what we did with the wheels, we couldn't find, uh, I wanted to do one Watanabe's or Hayashi. Yes. To have that JDM flavor, but nobody makes, they didn't make those and it wasn't enough time to make a custom set. They wanted to make a custom set, but maybe they couldn't in the time. So what we did is we took the sock wheels, took out the hubs, got new uh, barrels, seven inch in the front, eight inch in the back. And some salt, uh, to match the flare. Yep. Yep. Them yep. back in and they fit perfectly. Um, so we retained the original hub caps. The original hubcaps were chrome with the black center. Yeah. We decided to make them black body color with the red to not only match the interior, but to as a as a foreshadowing to the Type R. Yes, uh, which yes. Is red with Perfect. The logo so now that you brought up the interior, let's segue to that. Okay. Let's go ahead and open this up. Here we go. And look at this. So this interior is designed by uh, DJ Designs. That and smell, dude. Fresh yeah, leather. Fresh Italian leather. Gorgeous. So, I used to own an E type that was gunmetal gray with yes. the interior, and I loved it. And so I wanted to have them keep that red thing going on because red is just kind of classy. It is. Um, and the right tone of it. It's not yes, too bright, it's exactly. not too adobe exactly. or clay. So the seats are basically the same pattern, same everything, just redone in, in leather as opposed to vinyl. Yes. Um, and everything else was carpeted, and then these were vinyl. So we, we decided to leather out the whole entire thing. Uh, leather panels. We, we created this pattern for it. Yeah. The seats, and then the rear back area. I, like I said, I had a Jaguar E-Type before with the red interior that had those luggage rails and stuff. And I was like, let's put that kind of stuff in there. Because, yeah. Go ahead and open that up so we can see that. That style. Have the key for it. They don't know where the key went, so and they can't find the key. Yeah, yeah so I can't open it. Right oh, I see. They can't I find think the, the key. guy left. Okay, no so problem. So he has the keys. But as you can see here, 
It's very, we, you know, we wanted to play up on the European aspects of this car. Yes. Because it felt like this is Honda, one of Honda's first car. Yes. Right? Before the ends and all that stuff. And it felt like Honda was like, okay, we're going to make these things with four wheels now. What is the rest of the world doing? And they're looking at Europe. So it has like MG Jaguar, that kind of feel. It does have a total feel to that. Yeah, it's not really JDM feel, right? It feels more European. And that's how we, all the design cues kind of like we're playing up on that aspect of it. You know, the so European in addition aspect. to the flares, yeah. K and Pandem made this duck bill, right? Yep. yep, this duck bill is also of that. I always love duck bills. I've got one of my Tonto, the 510. Um, it's so subtle, but adds to the body, yeah. the way it curves up right here. Yeah. Really, really yeah. subtle and nice. And a little aggressive, but subtle, yeah. Um, and then this rear end here, talking about this rear end here, this 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 little oval shape uh, is very reminiscent of, there's an Alfa Romeo called a TZ. Okay. Where it's you know red and then they have a matte black panel on the back, it's just flat. And then um, the taillights originally were a D-shaped taillight with amber, red, and uh, reverse yes. in there, but they were busted on the original. Okay. And you could not find a replacement. Understood. So what we did was like, okay, how do we how do we find a replacement that enhances this European feel? These are actually Ferrari 250 taillights. Oh, is that what you yeah, use? Yeah. So we use that kind of idea to, actually the radius of it fit perfectly in this curve right here. And so it was just like the natural choice for this car. Yeah. And we were looking at tons of stuff. Things are way too big because this car is small. Yes. We had to find something small enough that fit in here proportionally. That no, you know what? I think dimensionally, proportionally, and the aesthetic from yeah. that generation, yeah, from that I era. think you guys killed it. It's very, it is Italian-ish. My favorite era of design for cars is 60s. Okay. It was, it was designed with passion. Right? Yes. It's not designed with a computer. You know, now like the Vendadors, all those things, it's all computer arrow. Like, yes. Right? This is what you would intuitively think is arrow, you know, like these sweeping lines, right? Yes. And so 60s was all about that. And so we wanted to emphasize that aspect of the design. So the lights with this kind of bullet shape and all this stuff. Yeah. Know, really to, to, to emphasize that Europeanness of it. Well, as I spend time here in the Honda booth during SEMA, I hear, of course, people, I mean, they, they can read the, the paper, right. but they want to know what the power plant is. Right. So let's uh, let's pop that okay. and look at that. Look at that. So, OEM power plant, but completely rest restored. And yeah, I mean, not completely. There's some elements, there's some parts that are still waiting from Japan to get them. So the coil, the ignition coil, we have a new one coming. This is all one temporary in there, but um, this is a 791cc four cylinder dual over cam, overhead cam motor that revs to 9500 RPM. So it is. 9500? Yeah, so it is the grandfather of the S2000. Yes. I mean, it, and that's why we decided to keep the original power plant because there's a historical reason, a historical connection to the S2000. Yes. It's a small, that's also a small motor that revs like a motherfucker, right? Yes. And so, and so we wanted to show that this was what the started from. You know, and this idea was like, Honda was very familiar with making motorcycle engines that were high revving, high output engines. It's like, okay, we're gonna make a car motor now. Let's make it more robust like a car motor. So it's very large for 791 cc's. You know, it's not even a liter, but it's pretty big. Um, 95, this, what does it feel like at 9,500? 9,500 9, RPM. It loves it. It loves everything from 7,000 and above. Yes. You know, and so it rips and it's loud and it's crazy. What, because you, well, the center exit exhaust? Yeah, that, I mean, but stock, even stock, it was loud. It had a nice tone yeah, to it. it had a motorcycle like, burr. Yes. And actually, to, to go back to how this all started, I was in a YouTube hole. Yes. And I found this video on YouTube called Honda S800 Sound. Okay. And all it was was the RPM, I mean, the RPM gauge and the exhaust note. And I was like, yo, what is this car? It yes. was screaming, it was like rah, rah. And it has such a distinctive tone. Yeah, and I was like, what is this? And then I looked up the car and I'm like, oh crap, it's beautiful. Yeah. I wanna get me one of these. And so that's how it all kind of started. Um, so it was the sound, the high revving engine. Yes. And the, and the beauty of the design that pulled me in. Okay, so here's a question. Yeah. I mean, okay, honestly, right? So the Badlands on Netflix, uh -huh. uh, you're a Breitling ambassador. Right. You know, I mean, you move in some higher end circles. You sure. made that, that's your career, sure. right? So, I mean, with finances in, in your position, relative to some other people, sure. you would be able to do other things, right? Sure. Italian, uh, you know, sure. other kinds of European sure. cars, American. Sure. Why this car and why Honda? 
I've always been the kind of person that's not, I'm like on the edge of the mainstream. Like I've always been that way. I listen to punk music, hip hop, you know, all that stuff that was like never mainstream. And then even my acting career, I do main, non-mainstream roles. I do stuff that I just, I'm just that kind of guy. Yes. So I'm not going to be the guy that does what everyone else does. Sure. Right? Um, and so for me, designing a uh, SEMA car, I was like, what is unique? Yes. Like what is, what can we do to stand out that no one else has ever done before? Yes. And that's what I feel like what you got to do for design. I mean, I've studied architecture, so I know a bit about design. Right? Okay. And so that was, I was going to be an architect before I was going to be an, uh, an actor. Okay. So design is really important to me and understanding that connection and uniqueness in design and all that is really important. Yeah. So like all that was in my head in terms of making a SEMA car. You know, I'm not going to do a Supra. Right. There's 30 million Supras here, right? Yes, there are. Um, and, and I'm not going to do a, a Lambo or whatever. I'm not even a Lambo guy. I'm not that kind of guy. So regardless of the of the monetary aspect, it just does nothing for you. No, no. It's To me, it's about the uniqueness and, and the rarity and the quality of their build, right? And it's not about uh, being about bling bling, you know? Yeah. Um, and how can you stand out? You know, how can you stand out with a budget? You can do it with a budget, you know? Right. Um, you just got to be smart and creative.